so I am about to put these uh, caps on um, and I have this stripe right here which has kind of a dash on it what I assume is the negative lead and there's a big huge thing over here and I would assume that this would be the positive terminal now there is no plus on this but that definitely has the sign of a negative so I'm going to assume that it just goes here and so they're all oriented the same way I'm just gonna flip them over like this just solder them all together and that should be that so I'll get that set up and then get those things on there resistance these are supposed to be 220 K resistors but when I put it up there just on the sides of these things. Maybe it's because of the caps. I wonder if a little bit of this voltage from this ohm meter had actually gone into the caps. Hmm. Well, shows what I don't know. But uh, interestingly enough, but I did test the uh, the values before I put them on there to make sure I put them in the right spots. But they uh, they seem to have changed after I put them in the board. So um, it's just going to be something I have to little study a little bit just to understand a little a little bit more why the values would change after soldering them. So, uh, but looks like that works. Anyways, all right. So this is what I was talking about. I'm just going to go ahead and test this right here. So yeah. 10k so we're going to put that right here where obviously it says 10k anyways that board's complete really didn't take very long super 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 easy to follow i mean it's like just got to. i mean they they pretty much drew the lines exactly where you're supposed to put them so it's just you just need to pay attention i just use these tweezers right here um you know just to grab them and just you know twist the twist the little pieces and stuff like that in there. It's not as clean as some people's. It's a little uneven. I would have liked it to get a little bit prettier than that, but you know, it's not, it's not way off. So that's the finished first board. And tomorrow I will start the next one. So now on to the main board. So we're just gonna start with all of the 220s. So we've got one here, we've got one here. Um, we'll just find them all over the board and just knock all those things out and put everything else out. And we'll count how many that we need and we'll just put them in one by one. Again, this is pretty simple to follow. Resistors don't have any kind of polarity, so you can just pop them in there and solder them and done. You do have to be more cautious of the design of the actual um, the capacitors, those, because some of those are polarity value. So you can see on this right here, you'd have a plus and minus. I believe the ones that are the capacitors like this, the C6, the 22 nanofarad, I don't think that has any kind of polarity. I don't see any plus or minus. These guys do have plus and minus, very specific to those. For example, these caps up here, they definitely have the plus and the minus side. So you can see where those go. And anything that you'd have to find, plus and minus, those are the things you'd have to pay attention to. So this is something interesting I came across. It's not a huge deal, but this is how I'm just putting in my little just finding little spots and just popping them in the holes. Um, but I came across this one right here, which is R44. So see if we can see that. So if you look at it closely, uh, the camera can, there we go. So it says R44 and it says 4K7. I thought it was a typo, but it's actually on the schematic. So I did want to go to the resistor 44 and see what that actually was. So I went to the, the bill. Oops. Uh, so I went down to find R44, which is this guy right here, and there's only one of them, and that actually does come out to be 4.7K. So I thought it was a typo, but I guess that's how they're just, you know, dictating. So if there is a 2.2K, it's probably going to be 2K2 somewhere on the board. And we can see 2K2 is number six, and there's a bunch of them. Uh, so where is 2K2? <clears throat> Let's see if we can find that same type of anomaly somewhere else on the board. Uh, yeah, there we go. So right there. So the R24 is 2K2, so it's basically 2.2. Uh, so that's what that is. So when we're looking for it, we are gonna wanna find the one resistor in the bags that is of the value. These are the bigger ones. 
these are the 470 and this is why you want to make sure that you don't get those confused because those are actually 470 not 4.4k or 4.7k and that would be under this guy so that's 4k7 and there's just the one so that's it so that's uh how we got through all that i just want to make sure that you didn't get confused if you saw that on the schematic so this was a little confusing and i needed to make sure we pull this out so on this if you're just following the schematic it does say uh uh, resistor 34 and it says 447 with a with a um, asterisk and I was looking for it on this sheet and I found down here that R64 is somewhere where the hell is it so this 47k is not what we're supposed to be using as you can see this R64 is reduced to 33 ohm R22 is 680 ohm it is 40, 47. Okay, so that's fine. That's what we're looking right here. So it's just a 30, 47. Okay, so double check your work because the 47K and 4.7 and the 47, they can be definitely confusing and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we definitely have that. So for what it's worth, um, we do need to be very careful. And, and this is obviously for the noobs and who just has a question about building their first amp project. So what I've run across and I've had a couple of problems so far is, and I've never done this before, so I never knew to really cross-reference these things. So 10K is here and that would be, you know, R32. That would be the actual resistor. So you have to find that on the board. The problem with this is it seems like it's really intuitive because it tells you exactly what you're going to do. Like, for example, you see resistor 13 1M, so it's 1 million. So you go to the thing, you find the 1 million, you put it there, you solder it, and you're done. However, here's the thing. There's a 10K there, and then there's a 10K 3 watt there. They both are different resistors in different things. So I ended up putting the 10K over here just because it said 10K R whatever, but I didn't check the number as far as which resistor it was. So I put this resistor when I first built this board in this slot, and that would have been a problem because this is a 3 watt, and this is probably a 0.5 or 0.7 or something like that, and it would have smoked this whole board. So it's very careful. I'd be very careful about finding in cross I, I would say do this. Make sure that, you know, before you just plop down which one, you check the C19, whatever that is, against this and make sure that there is not two versions. If there's two versions of them, put them together and make sure you isolate where you're going to go with that. Uh, and then use this. This is kind of a more of a physical schematic to where the other one's just a parts list. But again, I've had to pop out quite a few and replace them. Um with other ones because they don't say anywhere on the board if they're five watts or if they're what. And then you've got also these notes right here, which were confusing, where it says resistor 64 is reduced to 33 ohm and R24 680. So they still included in the pack the ones that weren't supposed to go there. So like for example, the two, two K2s, those were reduced in certain areas. So I had to pop those out. It's just something to be aware of. Uh, if you see anything with asterisks or if anything, you know, special notes on there, take those down, get yourself organized and all that kind of stuff before uh, you just start putting those things in there. They can be a little bit of a pain in the neck to get out, but I was able to reuse everything and it's still, uh, still in good working order so far. Uh, but just for what it's worth, uh, take the time to do that because you're probably gonna run into that situation like I did. And it's the finished resistors. Um, I've checked over everything and it looks like it's all good to go. So it's now we're going to go ahead and put in some of the caps and start getting the rest of this all put together. Okay, so I've run into a couple of uh, little things that uh, just are strange to me um, just because of the way it's laid out. Um, these are the capacitors. Now, resistors are pretty easy to read and you just use your multimeter and you just Put up the value and it tells you what it is however in this case these didn't even have any writing on them they just had the values on the capacitor so the, what's tricking me up specifically and again i'm new at this a lot of this is for noobs not for the guys that know now i'm looking at all these capacitors and you see that there's seven there but there's one right here it says four there's a comma seven so i see that is c24 and there's one of them now i see this one right here and it says 47p now this one says 470p and there's two of those now by deduction i can sit there and say okay there's two of those and then there's one of those so that should be fairly easy however what's really screwing me up is it says orange drop 
I've always thought that that would be an orange drop, considering it's orange. But these guys, they're not orange at all. They're more tan. Um, and these are blue. <laughs> so, I don't understand why this would be considered to be an orange drop. Uh, and these say ceramic. So, uh, on the other sheet, same type of deal. We've got radial. All this kind of jazz. But what they don't do is explain on here what these are. So I basically went and did a little bit of YouTube and figured out what the values, wrote down what the codes are on each one of the bigger ones, which I would actually consider the orange drop. So apparently the first two numbers are the value. So that's two zero. And then there's going to be three zeros after that. And then the K is, that's the voltage obviously. And the K is the tolerance. So this is really just a part number. So it's disregard that. This right here, same thing, disregard that. Uh, even though there's a K here and there's a P here, but that basically this. Now these numbers right here, so this 2-1 is basically made in 2021, and that's the 32nd week that it was produced. So this was 21, this one's 21, and this one's 21. And these are all just the different weeks of supposedly when that was done. So that being said, uh, not a big deal. Um, but I do have to do the calculations myself to figure out what the 104 actually comes out to be. Um, but where I was really thrown off was the fact that those were, these are the physical orange drops, which I would say. And these capacitors are the electrolytics that make more sense. And these are also polarized, so they have the, uh, the polarity on them. So they have the negative side and the positive side. So we've got most of the uh, leads done. I've got to uh, put the riser screws on here that fit real nice in there. And then basically what I did is I just took all the color codes from this right here. As you can see, purple and red and blue and all that kind of stuff and just matched them up. And I just took the wire that came with it, say for example, just this, and I just took lengths of it and I just looked at where it needed to be and then just kind of saw what its destination was going to be just long enough to where I could get it to, you know, fit into uh, where it needed to be without having to be all over the place. And uh, that's about it. So I've just been taking my time with this, getting this all the way across and just, uh, see what's left there's not much um really it's going to be a lot more of the outputs and uh just wiring this guy up that's about it so just as far as taking the length of cable not all not now this schematic unfortunately came with some colors that didn't weren't included for example like this is kind of like almost a lavender color or a pink color and i don't really have that uh that may be uh, I don't know because you can kind of see that this is like a purple color and that's more of a kind of a pink color Didn't get those but then of course I've got uh, Yellow cable which is there uh, Not much in the way of brown. I don't have any brown. So anyways, this is the only thing that got me a little bit confused Just because I didn't understand which was which so this is just a just a regular You know kind of the mono cable with a ground where this was coming out was these guys so i can't really tell just by looking at that which is the ground i would imagine the bare wire would be that and then this would just be the point to this right here but when we would follow that signal path all the way up to here we've got that and that all right, so now we're back with an answer. Uh, took a couple of weeks off from the project, uh, but that's not a big deal. But um, I just did not understand this right here. What was the idea between this big, huge hole here and that? And it just didn't make sense. But there was a screen in the back. Basically, what uh, happened is I got a shout out from a very, very nice gentleman named of Scott Streaker. And uh, he did kind of a FaceTime, showed him up close. And what he basically explained to this is, this is the shielded cable uh, that needs to be attached as the main lead. But what was really throwing me off in the entire process is on the schematic, and this is really just a physical diagram. And again, the schematic, if I could read better, would make a difference. But I just, this is what threw me off. And so sometimes these, these things can actually mess you up. But 
you see how this right here splits off um, and this one would go to that and uh, it just didn't make any sense to me uh, especially when you trace it back to here if you look close enough it looks like both of those wires are going to that one connection which would be a short and a major problem but here's what he explained to me he explained to me what essentially is a Faraday cage. Um, so this right here is going to go through said hole, okay? And it's gonna go both like this. If I can get them to go through. And look at the size of the cable and the size of the hole. It was pretty much meant to be. That's exactly the size diameter that it needed to be. So what I'm going to do is on the back of this, I'm going to solder the um, obviously the uh, the bare wire to the screen because this is all grounds that's what that basically is and then i'm going to solder this uh shielded point to that guy right there okay um and then this like as he explains also kind of works as a stress relief um so that makes a lot of sense and then the other side to where it's going to go is when i cut this wire i'm actually going to strip it a bit back kind of like i just had it like this um, and, and I'm gonna snip this part off completely. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of heat shrink all the way up until this point. So there's no possibility of any frayed wires or anything like that coming loose and touching any of the contacts, that would be bad. Um, so this is the only point that actually gets uh, connected to that tube um, pin. And then the, ba the rest of it would be basically, the outside would be acting as a Faraday cage. Um, so that would help with RF and those type of things. So that's what stopped me um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, dead in my tracks, and I was very concerned about it because it just didn't make sense, and it was worth uh, taking the time. That's why you shouldn't push yourself when you do these projects. You know, take your time, enjoy the process. You know, this is this is essentially a four thousand dollar amp. Yes, it's still pretty expensive. It still costs more than a thousand dollars to build, uh, even as a clone. Um, but at the same point in time, it's not worth blowing up just because you want to rush through. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put it together, cut the links, and um, after I've got that done, I'll show you what the finished result looks like. So you can see one end is going to be for the, um, you know, the screen uh, that's going to go through the actual board. And then what I did over here is, again, I cut that other wire off uh, and then just put a tiny little bit of uh, shrink tubing uh, on there because you don't need it to go all the way down and then just enough to connect to the pin uh, as you can see right there. Uh, and the way I did this uh, was actually kind of clever, just discovered it, but instead of holding it in a place or trying to melt the ground, I just basically put it in this alligator clip and then dropped the piece on top of it exactly the height that I needed and just used the, uh, uh, the heat gun and uh, just zapped it for a second and it did all, all set, all set and done. Uh, oh my God. Oh, this is something interesting. So this is screwed. Look at that. It's frayed. That's not good. Okay, so what I thought was awesome is not awesome. So this thing is that sharp to where when it held onto this, it just cut right through the wire. So now I don't really have to get rid of this, but <laughs> I have to put another piece of shrink tubing on there. Um, yeah, so be aware uh, your alligator clips can actually be so uh, so tough that they can actually cut through your water so your wire, so that could cause a short. So be careful with that. All right, now that I got the cables here, uh, I cut this one for here. Um, it's going to go across that guy. This one is going to go to this guy. And uh, that's what it looks like on the back. Let's see if I'm going to pull these things off real quick. Ah. And so you can see that I just wrapped it around like that. I know that's kind of an ugly solder joint, um, but it's, it's a very solid point. I checked it, <clears throat> so they're good to go. Uh, but we got uh, one more that's just going to be the length of the cable um, and it's just going to go across uh, the leads there and this last one's going to go over to the pin, pin 7 or something like that yeah pin 7 over here on the second heater so that's plenty long enough and uh, we are good all right so that mystery has been demystified and uh, now I'm going to start uh, wiring everything else up Ruby.